Latin America and the Caribbean. I'm going to invite Lidra, pardon. She is security analyst of We a round of applause, please. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lucy Mara. I am uh, of uh, Nick BR, BR, and uh, I am in charge of uh, the Latin American uh, group Anti Abuse. Would you like me to speak Portuguese or English? Because, my, well, my Spanish is reasonable, but I'm afraid of confusing some terms. So maybe I'd rather speak Portuguese, and I hope you'll understand. Yes? Good, thank you. So I'm going to start. Who here heard uh, talk about uh, the lack AAWG in Latin America? So, because I don't want to be repeating things and telling you the story, if uh, history of this, uh, if you don't know it. So let me tell you what abuse is, the network abuse. Basically, this is a malicious use of the network without the consent of the owner. What are the most well-known abuse activities? Spam, phishing, traffic interception, spoofing. Spoofing is used to generate denial of service attacks. And the denial of service attacks themselves. And this is the use of resources that don't belong to the attacker but from another network in order to benefit from this and to obtain something in favor of the attacker and using third party infrastructure. Then the abuse of the networks has a very strong impact for the network operators uh, working group at LACNOG is addressed at network operators mostly. Now, what is the impact on operators? Well, there are several impacts. There are operational impacts. They affect the business. So we can start with damage to the image of the business, to the operator that has a lot of traffic from the network, so this generates a poor image for that operator. And even this can be avoided in appearing because a lot of trash is conveyed. This can lead to the damage to the image. It can affect the operational cost and also unavailability of resources as a result of the denial of service, which all leads to unsatisfied clients. So you have to send someone to the client, someone who can change the devices so that the network can work better. All this leads to losses. You can also have an availability of the service so the clients are not satisfied and can end up being blacklisted. So you can have issues such as phishing. So as I said, you end up being blacklisted as an IP and the IP becomes inaccessible. There are also legal issues related to this. For example, a client that hosts content that is inadequate or illegal. So you end up involved in problems such as those. So these uh, types of abuse can affect the operations of the ISPs. So based on that concept, we created the LAC 
AAWG group, the AUG group, the anti-abuse working group for Latin America and the Caribbean. This should be the forum so that people could meet and share the problems and discuss things, raising the awareness in order to try to figure out solutions. This idea began back in 2016, in May 2017, at a LACNIC meeting in Force de Iwasu. Uh, that was the official beginning of that group. Within the context and the activities of this group, these are the following. We have the intention of developing an anti-abuse community to organize awareness raising activities, trying to create the need to adopt best practices in different sectors. For example, runners, issues related to anti-spoofing, best practices regarding emails and other issues. So the idea, therefore, is to raise the awareness on the problems and the possible solutions. And in addition to that, to implement this in the group. In addition to that, one of the purposes is to promote the development of anti-abuse recommendations and best current operational practices, the BCOPs. So this also helps in addressing region-specific and also global issues. These are some of the main activities we have organized over the past years. We had activities in association with M3ARG, MARG, and together with them, we made presentations on different topics. For example, on best practices, the abuse desk, namely how to deal with this abuse within the networks, GDPR. This has to do with privacy, DDoS, email security. So we developed a BCOP. This is a joint document which I will be referring to later on. Among the activities organized in the group, we also include awareness activities such as presentations and conferences, the ABRINT conference, which is an association of operators in Brazil at the LACNIC LACNOG meetings and DTR. We also participated in the MOG meetings in the United States to have that interface between, namely, Latin America and the United States, because MOG also has operations in Europe. Let me now refer to the work done at BCOP. At that time, we spoke about some of the needs in the region, the problems we encountered and for which we wanted to figure out solutions. One of the main problems that we identified were the network devices, the, these that have minimum security, which then lead to abuse and favored DDoS attacks. So these are the problems we are aware of. So for example, weak passwords or one single password for all the devices, so when this password is discovered, this can be used to access that devices or services that uh, have default settings and then these are vulnerable to abuse and generate malicious traffic. In addition to that, there is a lack of ways to deal with this, these issues remotely. People also asked me, Lucimar, if I purchase a device and it stalls it at my customer's location and 15 minutes later this device no longer becomes, belongs to me and people are using this for something that should not be done, something is abusing from my device. It's not my client and it's not myself. So based on that, we developed a list of requirements. Therefore, when I purchase my device, this would serve 
as a basis to ask my vendor for the security requirements I would like to include in my device. This list was developed jointly with the LACNOC group and the MOG group and the BCOP. In May 2019, this was then launched. There was a partnership with MOG, which then led to translating this into several languages. This is currently available in English, Portuguese, Japanese, and Korean. In association with MOG, this, as I said, was also translated into Japanese and Korean. This paper had an impact in the region. And in Brazil, we had an impact. This document became a reference for Anatel, which is the Brazilian telecom regulator. This was one of the references. Not, it's not the only one, but it really was helpful in order to convey to Anatel a view on the pro existing problems. They worked on recommendations for the vendors in Brazil for those who provide equipment. So a list of security elements, a list was prepared and published by Anatel as a list of recommendations. In March 2023, and this is quite recent, <coughs> this reference list was reviewed. We have been working on this for quite a long time now. I participated in this meeting with Anatel. We spoke about the security of these devices. We discussed a series of things. And in March this year, a new regulation was issued whereby some of the requirements became mandatory. For example, unique passwords for each device in order to avoid having one single password for multiple devices. Uh, so when one password is discovered, access to all the devices of the same model is available. So now unique passwords are required or no hard-coded credentials because clients know that their devices are being used by the attackers but cannot change the password. So the vendor has to have a formal process. The vendor has to have a formal process to coordinate the vulnerability disclosure. Just a minute, please. So this became a requirement for the vendor, the one who wishes to sell devices in Brazil. This company should then have a mechanism in place to inform about the vulnerabilities and to inform about how these were corrected inform the clients. This did not exist in the past. There was a big difficulty in the sense of finding corrections to problems that we were aware existed but were not corrected. So this became mandatory. And there's a two-year minimum period for security patches for these devices. So this was approved in March this was issued in March 2023 and will enter into force in March 2024. So how to contribute? What do we need to do? We have to continue working. We have to have a community where we can discuss the problems and figure out solutions to engage in the development of best practices, so the idea is to continue working on this topic. We invite you to participate in the mailing list. And we also invite you to engage in the development of best practices as well as in 
conveying the application of best practices and sharing this with your clients. You can also suggest new topics, new best practices. You can contribute content. You can translate relevant existing B Corps, for example, from other regions such as RIPE. So these are like partner entities. So there are very many activities that we can carry out in order to raise the awareness on the need of fighting abuse. If we don't fight against these problems, the problems won't be solved on their own, and it is likely that things get worse. So if you wish to tell us about cases where you saw that this abuse was dealt with and that there was reparations, all things that can contribute to improving the organizations and help the group grow and improve will be welcome. We have two lists of LACNAC, there, the list of LACNAC and, uh, and BCCOP, and I'd like to know whether you believe that it would be good to have our own anti-abuse list so that we can uh, better monitor any problems. Uh, I think that it is better to have our, if you consider that it's better to have our own list, well, let me know. And then in that case, I will discuss that. And uh, it is possible to create one. So when I suggested holding a meeting, I managed to get a room, or not a plenary session, but we're going to find a smaller room to uh, get together because well, there won't be so many of us. So, well, I'm here and I'm at your disposal. I'm open uh, to uh, uh, discuss things with you, to bring uh, contents to uh, the events. So, please. Um, do not hesitate uh, to uh, contact us uh, here. I'm, I'm not uh, one uh, uh, speaker. So I'm not uh, just uh, the one who generates uh, uh, contents, but uh, um, we can do it all together. So the idea is to get together with more uh, anti-abuse uh, people. We have a townhouse here that uh, has acted not just bringing knowledge, but also expertise. So, and the, why is it necessary to uh, uh, work on uh, against abuse? So it's the, the idea is not just to talk. Well, thank you, Lucy Mara. So now we'll have some time for questions here in the room. If you can please get close to the microphone. Do we have any questions via Zoom? Mm, we don't have any now. So, do you have any questions for Lucy Mara? Thank you, Lucy Mara. Yes, there is a question there. Go ahead. But we're not, it's not a question. It's to vote what you just asked me. I think it would be good to have our own list. I don't. I think that the others are not exactly the same. I think that there are anti-abuse problems that would be good to discuss. Uh, Yes. Sorry, could you could you repeat it, but a bit more slowly? It was not a question. I wanted to answer your question. You asked us about about having a dedicated list, and I think so. Yes, it would be good to have our own list. Perfect. Thank you, Carlos. Anything else? I'm Fabricio from Fine House, and it's, as Lucy Mara said, this is rather an invitation. Since I started coming to uh, the LACNIC events, I've always attended the CSIRT meetings, and one of the things that people discuss uh, is that they would like to have more participation by ISPs on security. When we speak of people who work with security and with CSERTs, we support those that are trying to solve the problems. However, we also know 
that uh, for ISPs very often in a business vision uh, security is complicated and sometimes it is difficult to be able to convince um, uh, peop uh, the people who have the money to invest in security. So what we would like is to talk with you to understand better what are the problems, what are the difficulties, so that together we may help you help us solve security problems. And in Spam House, for instance, people tend to see us as the bad guys that are blocking the uh, ISPs and that uh, only cause problems. But to tell you the truth, when an IP is blocked, that means that there's something fishy going on there. So we can help you solve the problem. And we have some tools that we have developed and they are free of charge. For instance, we have a replication portal and the ISPs can register. And there you have a list of all the ISPs that are registered with us. And, and you can see the type of problem that uh, they they have and some instructions of how to solve them. Now, essentially, that part of the instructions of how you can solve them, all that is done from a point of view of the people that are identifying the problem from outside. So we don't know how the ISPs operate. Each one operates in a different manner. So for us, it would be excellent to have the feedback in an ISP so that we may know we say, well, that could work or that would not work. So for, if we are to implement the things that you are promoting, we need support. So the idea is that together we may ha develop a discourse that works for everyone. What I see from outside is that so far when we speak of security, the discord is too much on, uh, from the outsider's view and not uh, who are uh, working inside the ISP. So it would be very good to have your food feedback so that uh, we can work together. Thank you. Thank you, Lucimara. So, oh, I want to thank you all for being with us until the end. Tomorrow we'll meet again because we'll have presentations.